It has been said that no amount of safety equipment can overwhelm the human capacity for error. Non-human primates are very valuable in biomedical research, but they do have specific needs and can pose potential safety problems to people who work with them. When working with non-human primates, it is important to make your experience as safe as possible. Non-human primate species that are used in biomedical research have complex behaviors and social patterns, and they are not domesticated animals. They are physically very strong and can be dangerous. Significant hazards associated with non-human primates are diseases known as zoonoses that can be transmitted from animals to humans. But you can protect yourself. We're going to show you some of these hazards and the methods you can use to ensure your safety. The following occupational health standards will minimize your risks for acquiring a zoonosis. Medical procedures of testing and surveillance, personal protective equipment, biohazard containment procedures, sharps disposal, and animal restraint methods. The methods that will be described are universal precautions. They minimize risk of exposure to known and potential hazards. The most dangerous disease agent transmitted from non-human primates is Maccasine herpes virus 1, commonly known as herpes virus simiae or herpes B virus or B virus. Herpes B virus is transmitted by several non-human primate species that we classify as macaques. Herpes B virus infection in macaques is a condition where symptoms are mild or often non-existent. Infected macaques may alternate between a state of inactive and active infections, and they may shed the virus sporadically. A macaque with a negative test result for herpes B virus cannot be assumed to be free of infection. This virus can cause a fatal encephalitis in humans. Since 1987, several people have died of herpes B encephalitis. Most of the cases have been due to bites and scratches from animals or due to injuries from contaminated equipment or mucous membrane exposure to secretions and excretions. But in some cases, the source and the route of the exposure were not identified. Other diseases can also be transmitted from monkeys to humans. Examples are tuberculosis, salmonellosis, shigellosis, and amoebic dysentery. Common sources of exposures are bites or scratches by animals, needle stick injuries, or injuries from sharp edges of contaminated cages or equipment. Splashes from caging into the eyes or onto mucous membranes can also expose you to disease. Humans can also transmit diseases, such as tuberculosis and measles, to non-human primates. Preventative methods and basic occupational health standards are the starting points in protecting yourself. Some simple universal precautions can protect you. An important principle is to treat all macaques as if they were herpes B positive. Remember, infected macaques may alternate in testing positive and negative for the virus, and viral shedding is sporadic. Your institution is required to have an occupational health program with a physician who is knowledgeable or willing to learn about medical problems that can arise from contact with non-human primates. For your protection, you must participate in the medical testing and surveillance procedures of your institutional health program. It is also advisable for you to carry a medical alert card that outlines the occupational risks associated with handling macaques. The medical procedures in an institution's occupational health program may include 1. Tuberculin tests, 2. Measles immunization, and 3. Tetanus immunization. Tuberculosis is a major concern in non-human primate colonies. Because tuberculosis is a slow-growing microorganism, it is difficult to diagnose in both people and animals. The most widely accepted practice is routine surveillance of both people and non-human primates. TB testing is done at a frequency depending on the individual institution's occupational health program. A skin test is typically performed on personnel, but checking for immune responses via blood test may also be performed. For non-human primates, the eyelid is the standard preferred testing site because it is sensitive and relatively easy to observe on awake, unrestrained animals. Using a new, 27-gauge or smaller sterile needle for each animal, 
Inject undiluted 0.1 milliliters of mammalian old tuberculin interdermally into one upper eyelid. When conducting consecutive TB tests, the eyelids should be alternated between each testing period. A smaller volume, 0.05 milliliters, may be used in the eyelid of small New World primates like marmosets and squirrel monkeys. Typically, people are tested one to two times a year, and non-human primates are tested one to four times a year. At a minimum, three TB skin tests, two weeks apart, should be conducted to screen animals in quarantine at the beginning, midpoint, and end of the quarantine. Another disease of concern is measles. This is especially for the protection of the non-human primates as measles can be fatal to them. Measles may also cause an immunosuppression in surviving animals, which may test negative on a tuberculin skin test, even if they have active tuberculosis. Your immunity to measles should be verified by a blood test. If not immune, you should be immunized for measles and your immunity verified before you start working with non-human primates. Finally, a current tetanus immunization for personnel is important due to the risk of infection of wounds and punctures occurring in the animal facility. Another important component of your institution's occupational health program is the handling of human exposures to agents of zoonotic infections. All mucous membrane exposures, bites, scratches and abrasions, no matter how insignificant they seem, need to be worked up as a potential exposure to B virus. An exposure response protocol created by the veterinary staff, occupational health personnel, and environmental health and safety personnel should be established. Eye wash stations and instructional postings for exposure management should be readily available in well-marked areas of the animal facility. For any exposure, stop the procedure being performed and secure the animal. For any exposure involving the eyes or other mucous membrane exposures, remove and dispose of contact lenses if applicable. Flush eye or mucous membranes at an eye wash station or with normal saline solution for at least 15 minutes. For other exposures like needle stick injuries, bites, scratches, or a scratch which draws blood from a macaque or from anything which the macaque has touched, such as a cage and any contact of macaque secretions to human abraded skin or mucous membrane, immediately encourage the wound to bleed and cleanse with soap and running water for a total of at least 15 minutes. Do not scrub. A buddy system is recommended to ensure that exposure is properly managed, especially to verify that the time period needed for adequate washing is met. All injuries from animals, cages, or equipment must be reported immediately to your supervisor and to the facility veterinarian. They must be documented in an official institutional injury report. Since there's a chance of a herpes B virus exposure with any injury associated with macaques, Blood samples of the exposed individual are taken and sent off for serology. If a particular macaque is involved in an exposure incident, the veterinary staff must take blood samples from this animal for serological evaluation too. A record of injuries, testing results, and follow-up procedures must be maintained for the exposed persons and for the monkeys involved as part of the occupational health program. Using the appropriate personal protective equipment and clothing is to ensure your safety. These items are essential to your protection. They should be worn any time you are in a non-human primate room or working with the animals. The protective garments include shoe covers or dedicated shoes, a gown or coveralls, face mask, eye protection, and two pairs of gloves. Head bonnets may also be used. To protect your hands, you should double glove with disposable exam gloves when working in a primate room. Gloves made from nitrile are more puncture resistant than latex gloves. So, if you are handling animals or cages, the use of nitrile gloves for one of the glove layers is recommended. Also, nitrile gloves do not stick to tape, so they are preferable when applying bandages to primates. If you have a cut or an abrasion on your hands, bandaging and taping the area is recommended before donning the first pair of gloves. When gloving, Pull the gloves up over your wrist so there's no gap between the gloves and the gown sleeves. If a disposable gown to be worn is without thumb holes, you can punch your thumb through the cuff of the gown in order to secure it between the glove layers. This will keep your wrist covered while you work.
Protective clothing should be provided by the facility for individuals who work with animals. Garments should be laundered by the facility or should be disposable. Because a fatal case of herpes B occurred due to a splash from a cage pan into the eye, all personnel entering macaque rooms need some form of eye protection. Face shields have the added advantage in that they protect the eyes and also the mucous membranes and facial skin from splash exposures. Biohazard containment plays an important role in ensuring safety for you and other people by preventing environmental contamination outside the facility. If you must leave a non-human primate area with your gloves on, make sure to disinfect your gloved hands so that you will not unwittingly contaminate areas outside of the non-human primate area. Also, cages and equipment must be decontaminated or covered before being removed from a non-human primate area. Avoid public areas as much as possible. Be aware that you may sustain a skin abrasion under the double gloves even when the gloves appear to remain intact. You can test a glove by filling it with water. A glove that doesn't leak has not been breached. Here's a glove that appeared intact but is shown to leak. If this breach was related to a hazard incident, such as an animal bite or scratch, the incident must be treated as an exposure to a zoonotic disease and the medical procedures described earlier must be followed. Taking off and disposing of the protective gear is part of biohazard containment. Protective clothing should never be worn or taken outside of the animal facility. Following proper procedure in taking off and disposing of the protective gear is part of biohazard containment. As you remove your protective equipment, be sure to put these items in the proper containers for laundry or disposal. Take off your shoe covers, then your outer covering. Turn your gloves and gown inside out as you remove them. Remove each outer pair of gloves before removing the eye or face covering, mask, and head cover. Disinfect any reusable eye covering before finally removing the inner pair of gloves. Before leaving the area, make sure you wash your hands with soap and water or a disinfectant hand scrub. Frequent hand washing is one of the most important precautions you can take to protect yourself from potential hazards. Another important part of safety is the proper disposal of sharps. Sharps are any object that can cause a puncture wound or a laceration, such as hypodermic needles or items made of glass or hard plastic. Remember, that used syringes and glass should go into sharps containers for disposal according to your facility's biohazard policies. For your safety, never recap a needle. Following an injection, the needle and syringe should be deposited directly into a sharps container. A safe alternative to conventional hypodermic needles is an injection system that is needleless or that automatically retracts or shields the needle into a sheath after being deployed. When handling non-human primates, your safety depends on the use of proper animal restraint procedures. For your protection, you must assume that all macaques, along with their tissues and secretions, are herpes B positive. You should never handle an awake non-human primate unless unavoidable to do so. However, when this is necessary, you should wear heavy leather gloves or gauntlets. You should also wear nitrile or latex gloves under the leather gloves for maximum protection. Awake monkeys can be safely handled with a collar and pole. When the pole is properly attached to the collar, the animal cannot get close enough to the handler to cause injury. This method is used for transferring animals to a test chair or to a new cage. Before entering a non-human primate room, look through the door window or peephole or crack the room door a small amount and scan the room for any escaped monkeys. In the event of a non-human primate escape, secure the area by closing doors and then obtain expert assistance. Do not attempt to recapture the animal yourself unless you have been trained in the technique. The use of nets by untrained persons can create additional hazards. This method poses a great risk for a bite or scratch from an animal or a cut from cage parts. In addition, other non-human primates may be stressed by seeing someone enter a room with a net. 
Non-human primates are housed in squeeze cages so that awake animals can be safely administered injections containing medications or chemical restraint agents like ketamine. Certainly, positive reinforcement training may also be used so that the animal presents itself for injections. Squeeze cages have a movable panel that slides forward to hold the animal firmly in place for receiving an injection. Pull the panel forward until the monkey is immobilized and engage the safety latches to prevent the monkey from pushing the squeeze apparatus back. Then give the injection. Because the animal is unable to move, the needle insertion and the injection take place without causing physical trauma to the animal's tissues. Note that the injection was made in the quadriceps muscle, which is a preferred site for intramuscular injection. Following the injection, release the safety latches and push the squeeze panel to the back of the cage so that the animal once again has full use of that space. Again, engage the safety latches to hold the panel in place so that the animal cannot move the panel from this position. If, however, a chemical restraint agent is administered, be sure to push the panel only part way back and latch it in this position. This allows the monkey to grab both sides of the cage and reduces the risk for a fall injury when the drug takes effect and makes the animal groggy. Animals who have received a chemical restraint agent should be watched carefully while the drug takes effect and should never be left unattended. Use caution when removing a sedated monkey from the cage. Injuries can occur even when a monkey seems to be fully sedated. They will sometimes claw or cling for support when they sense movement. When returning a non-human primate to a cage, be sure to follow these steps. 1. Transfer 2. Latch 3. Lock and 4. Test After the animal is placed inside the cage, set the latch on the cage door. Finally, close the lock on the cage and then test it to be sure it is secure. Testing the lock is important to make sure that the animal cannot later escape from its cage. Finally, all sedated monkeys should be observed in their cage until they are sufficiently awake to maintain normal postural movements. Because non-human primates are intelligent, positive reinforcement techniques are effective for training these animals to cooperate in procedures such as injections and presenting a leg for blood collection or moving into a transport box. Positive reinforcement techniques reward the animals with treats or favorite foods for performing an action. Following these precautions protects both you and the animals on which your research depends. Avoid the I know my animal syndrome. Non-human primates used for research are not domesticated and they can be dangerous. It is easy to become lax about precautions when you work with research animals every day. Never forget that these universal precautions are critical for preventing illnesses that can be deadly. Education, training, and communication are key. If you are unsure, ask your supervisors, veterinarians, or occupational health and safety personnel. Remember, safety comes first.